So I sold out of HPA engines. My bad. You can pre-order on my website if you want to see it. Like I was trying to say before I was so rudely interrupted by gravity, pre-orders are available on my website, and the parts that I'm waiting on should be here sometime this month. Considering that this month is already half over, pre-orders should ship pretty soon, so expect late this month, early next month. I put a lot of effort between the last batch and this one into streamlining the assembly process. One of the first big improvements is right behind me. This is an automatic tubing cutter that I designed. Originally, we were cutting every IGL by hand, which was consistent, but slow. With this bad boy right here, we can be consistent and still slow. But there's a big difference between a slow human and a slow robot. The robot doesn't take a salary. The best part is when you view it at the right angle. If you're interested in learning how I made that, leave a comment down below and I can get around to making a video on it. The second change is a little more obvious because there is a visible difference between the new engine and the last version. Until now, the solenoids I've been using came in a bag like this. I would have to manually open every single one, sort out the parts, disassemble the solenoid, strip the wire, cut the excess wire off, put heat shrink over both wires, and put it on my soldering station, which has liquid cooling to this connector here. You need to attach the connector to the liquid cooled jig, clamp the wires onto the holding device, align the connector with the wires, and permanently attach them with solder. Usually I have the PC fan running so that I'm not breathing in the fumes, but this was a one-off example, so I poisoned myself just for you guys. At this point you can disconnect it from the jig, align the heat shrink, and heat it up to shrink it. I guess that's why they call it heat shrink. And we're only just getting started. You still have to assemble it. We need to bring back in all of the parts that we set aside before, along with the solenoid body and the solenoid that we just finished. I also need a custom tool just to put this thing together. It's a socket that has notches filed in because there is no other way to access this screw. The assembly goes a little bit like this. I put the plunger in the operator. I put the o-ring over the operator. I line everything up and press the o-ring into place, making sure that Everything is still properly aligned. I then take this piece, slide it over the operator, put it back in, tighten it down by hand, tighten it down with the tool. Stay in focus, please. And we still aren't done. I have to put the coil on, tighten down this hex nut by hand, and I use the other end of the tool and I tighten that down. Now we finally have a completed solenoid. By contrast, the new coil comes like this from the factory. The o-ring is contained, the plunger is the only thing it's missing. I put the plunger into place, sandwich it inside, and now we're done. Obviously the new design cuts a lot of steps out compared to the old design which makes assembly much faster. But how does it affect performance? It doesn't. There aren't any other changes to the engine. It still uses the same nozzles, the same volume reducers, the same pressure cap, the same o-rings. Functionally, these two are identical engines. But if I'm changing out parts anyway, why not optimize it? For example, the wires come off of the back of the solenoid instead of the bottom. It didn't ever really cause problems per se, but the inner grip line and the wires make contact, which means that you have to bend the wires to get them out of the way of the grip line. And if you did it back and forth a ton, you could probably break the wires off, but I think that only happened to one person, so... Um, either way, it's definitely not a concern now because the wires don't make contact with anything. You might also notice that there is an Allen key on the back. And this is feature number two. You're able to tighten or loosen the screw in order to control how much the valve opens. I'll have to make an updated video on how to tune the Phoenix since it has more adjustability now, but the process is pretty much the same. The additional control and tunability allows you to squeeze every drop of efficiency out of your engine. I don't want to make any official claims yet, but we've seen some really positive results in our latest efficiency tests. It seems like there may have been a lot of drops left to squeeze, but we're still confirming the results. I'll go over the experiment that I ran and the results in that tuning video I just mentioned, so uh... 
I will say that I am not excited for all the emails that I'm gonna get of people who tighten this down all the way so that it doesn't open the valve at all and they're complaining that their engine stops working and I'm like, well, did you, did you tighten the back screw like a shit ton? There are also some random perks of the new design that definitely don't affect performance. Like, for one, I think it looks a lot nicer and it should photograph better because reflective surfaces are really hard to take product photos of. The outer surface of the solenoid is knurled, which makes it really easy to get a grip on and unscrew from the engine if you need to for maintenance. And the last perk is that the new design is a great excuse for me to do another giveaway. I'd be willing to bet all my meme coins that you enjoy free stuff. Leave a comment down below and share this video if you want to win a Phoenix engine from batch 2. Also, special congratulations to these two commenters from the last video. Some giveaway engines went unclaimed and you won the second drawing, so congrats. Please, the YouTube algorithm is starving for likes and comments. So comment down below how this makes you feel. Later.